Good morning. Welcome once again to Sunday School with New Life Church of Orlando. We are located at 3311 North Powers Drive in Orlando, Florida. Bishop Derek W. Hutchins is our pastor. Today is Sunday, November the 7th, 2021. If you can believe it, Christmas is just around the corner. I'm Ruthie Warren. Today, our studies are coming from Christian Life Series, Union Gospel Press. And our subject today, Moses' Prayer and God's Answer. So what are you talking about? This lesson is a continuation from last week and the series that we have been in. Last week, it was the rebellion of the people. If you remember, Moses had sent the 12 spies to uh, observe, to bring back a report of the promised land. And 10 of those spies came back with a positive report about the land, but a negative report about invading, taking possession of the inhabitants thereof. Only two came back with a positive report, a totally positive report. And the people, Israel, listened to the negative. They were ready to hightail it. They were ready to stone Joshua, Caleb, Aaron, and Moses. They were ready to uh, sign, to uh, uh, pick out, to choose, select their own captain and return to Egypt. In fact, they emphatically said God had brought them out. They wished to God that they had stayed in Egypt, that God had brought them this far just to kill them in the wilderness. And of course, God heard, and God was watching their attitudes as they grumbled. God was upset with them. In fact, in Numbers chapter 14 and verse 11, God questioned Moses, how long? How long, Moses, will these people provoke me, even after all the signs and wonders that I have be performed on their behalf? He says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm fed up. I've had it up to here. I will smite them with a pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee, Moses, a greater nation and mightier than they. This is what was the conclusion of last week's lesson. So let's take a look today to see where we go from here. Is God really going to destroy them all? Is God going to make of Moses a greater nation? Again, our subject, Moses' prayer and God's answer. Today, I want to leave this word with you. Interceding intercession, intercessory prayer. And let's see where it takes us with Moses. Our text is coming from Numbers chapter 14, continuation verses 13 through 24. They're still at Kadesh. They're still at the brink of the promised land. We have two outlines. One, Moses' great request. We'll hear what he prays for. Outline number two, God's great judgment. Listen, we've learned that any time, almost every time, that Israel came against Moses and Aaron, that judgment and punishment followed. So let's see today. Verses 13 through 19, Moses' great request. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. Moses is interceding. God, if you do what you said, if you wipe them out and create mightier, the people, the Egyptians are going to hear, and they are going to spread the word. Verse 14, And they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people. 
that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. What will the Egyptians say, Lord, if you wipe them out? They have seen how you have protected them, how you have covered them, how you have provided for them, even though Israel themselves are not acknowledging your greatness. Verse number 15. What will the other people say, Lord? We're talking about your reputation here. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. That's what they're going to say about you, Lord. And that's not fair, because that's not just as you are. Lord, your word is out there. Can you do this thing faithfully? I beseech you, verse 17, and now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgressions. That's you, God. That's who you are. And by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. God, that's who you are. You are gracious God. You are righteous God. You're faithful God. You're just God. Your word is out there, and your word cannot go out and return unto us void. So God, I beseech you on behalf of these, your people. You're so great a people. Now, Lord, here's what I'd like for you to do. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even unto now. God, you've forgiven them time after time again. So this is nothing new. You have seen their unfaithfulness. You have seen how ungrateful they are. So God, what you're seeing now, what you're hearing now, you've heard it before. You've seen it before. I beseech you, God, pardon these people. These are the people that you call so great a people. Pardon them. Moses, continue interceding. Verse 21. But as truly as I live, as truly as I live, said the Lord. But listen, let me go back just a minute. Let me go back and, and help Moses plead his case. Moses desired that the Lord's greatness and, and his integrity be seen throughout the earth as a forgiving God, forgiving Israel of their sins. God describes himself in verse 18, forgiveness, listen, listen, forgiveness always stands out from wrath. And God is the author of both forgiveness, and he's also the God of wrath. Moses is interceding. Forgive them. Sometimes, listen, because we talked about their fathers, sometimes sin becomes so entrenched in us that it becomes a family thing. Children learn certain behaviors from their parents who learn them from their parents, and so on and so on. Thus, the punishment for sin keeps going on down the family line. And so it was with Israel. God does not punish a child for what his parents do, but many times children grow up and perpetuate that sin, that the sin of their fathers and their grandparents. Those who repent, however, are forgiven of these sins. Let's go on now to outline number two, God's great judgment. We're going to pick it up with verse 20 through 24. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Moses' intercession has touched the very heart of God. And God says, I have pardoned 
according to your interceding. Verse 21, but, listen after but, as surely, as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. 22, because all those men which have seen my glory, how good I've been, and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have tempted me, now these ten times, over and over again, ten times the Lord says, and have not hearkened to my voice. They haven't listened to me. They haven't learned who I really am. He said, now those men, verse 23, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. I'm not going to let them go over. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. That generation, generation after generation, that won't believe. Believe, saints, believe. They shall not see the promised land. How close is your promise? Can you look over your left shoulder or your right shoulder and see it in a distance? Don't forfeit your promise. Verse 23, he says, none of them will see it. Verse 24, but my servant Caleb. Caleb was the positive spy. Because he hath another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, we must fully follow the Lord. We must follow what we don't see and what we don't understand, but know that it is God. And hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went. What he spied out, what he saw, I'm going to give it to him. And his seed shall possess it. Just like the, uh, what do they call it? The, um, the unjustness follows, uh, what do they call it? Generational curses. Just like generational curses, watch this. This looks like to me generational blessings. Caleb is going to be blessed and his seed shall possess the land. So we have generational blessings. Now listen, let's go ahead and conclude this lesson. And I must be very quick and brief. The subject, Moses' prayer and God's answer. I'm deeming this lesson interceding interceding for the saints of God. Fact, to illustrate that God hears and responds to the sincere prayer of his faithful servants. Are you an intercessor? Principle, to reaffirm the power of prayer in changing circumstances. It is so, prayer changes things, regardless of how dire the situation may seem to be. I'm a witness, prayer changes things application to establish a consistent prayer life that demonstrates complete trust and dependence on the Lord. Listen, Moses had that kind of relationship that he could speak to God face to faith and mouth to mouth. How about you? What is your relationship with God? The power of intercessory prayer and the reward for godly faithfulness is the essence of our lesson today. Intercessory prayer that brought about a change. God changed his mind. Hallelujah. But he still, it's still, the sin still had consequences. Moses' intercessory prayer was a plea for Israel. Over and over again, Israel was not taking God seriously. Saints, let's take God seriously. His prayer diverted the immediate and devastating judgment of God on them and brought them a pardon. Will you be an intercessor? Will you intercede for the saints of God? God is not like man. Forgiveness always stands out from wrath. Always. It's not natural for us to be as forgiving as God is, but God goes beyond man's measure. Saints, as faithful believers, we too possess an amazing power of intercessory prayer. If you have relationship with God, you have power that has not been harnessed. Are you an intercessory prayer warrior? Do you have that power? As I'm pleading with you, do you have that like relationship with God like Moses? 
Can you enter into your closet and touch the very heart of God? Can you stand in the gap? We should never take God for granted, God's grace and his mercy. We should never take it for granted. I'm going to jump, and I hope you get this. As seen in our lesson, there is a danger in not taking God seriously. God said your carcasses shall die before you reach the promised land. It's going to die in the wilderness. The reward for godly faithfulness, Caleb spoke up for God, and God spoke up for him and identified him as his servant, a true servant of God. A true servant will follow God where he leads, no matter where that is, and by faith and love for God. Listen, I'm going to conclude now. When you stand firm in your faith, in the midst of trying times, you can be certain that God will reward you for your faith and determination. Those who turn away from him in unbelief will find themselves on the outside looking in on a land of promise. Here it is. Where he leads me, this is your affirmation. I will follow, emphatically follow him. Of a surety, where he leads, I will follow without murmuring, grumbling, and complaining. I'll go with him all the way to my promised land. God bless you. I'll see you next week as we continue to look at a grumbling people. God bless.